Hey, good evening, dudes and dudettes. A uh, little update on the yellow fangs. Uh, these are 3D printed nightmares that I've been fiddling with for the last several months. And um, I have to tell you, in, in the last two years, I've opened myself up to working on some of these 3D printed items. And I've worked on some good ones and bad ones. And this has probably been the biggest headache of probably anything I have worked on in a long, long time. And I, I have built um, over the years some some really bad resin kits. And um, this probably tops them as far as difficulty of handling. I think the biggest problem with the 3D printed stuff is um, the brittleness of the materials. And I know that maybe has to go back to do with whoever's printing them. I know, I, I don't know a whole lot about 3D printing, but I do know there's different types and rigidities and qualities of what they print them with. And um, the body and everything's been fine, but the chassis has been a nightmare. It's so brittle. I, I literally have broken this chassis on the 1 16th scale car um, probably 15 times. I mean, it, it, I've just broken it over and over and over again. And it's really really frustrating and, and it broke in half again last night after it's been installed in the body for the past week or two and uh i was trying to get the motor in last night and i mean i i'm not kidding you i modified this engine before it went in this thing i ground away so much stuff it was unbelievable and made sure everything was test fitted in advance where i could get it in and out of the body because the tolerances are almost zero i mean you can barely get it in there and um was trying to get the motor in there last night and literally pushed the chassis through the bottom of the body and broke it in half again. And I, I just about hit the roof. I was ready to throw this thing against the wall. And I, I haven't done that in a long time with anything I've worked hard on, but it was really frustrating. So back out to the garage with the Dremel tool and ground out a bunch more plastic out of the bottom of the engine block. And what there is, there is a block that the engine mounts down on top of that's in the chassis. If you're working on this thing, if you're planning on getting one of these, the best recommendation I can give you is to remove at least 50% of that block because you've got to have more wiggle room to get this motor in there because the headers and everything, it's all printed in pretty much one big piece. You've got the block, the headers, uh, the cylinder heads, the blower, that is all one chunk and all the stuff on the front of it, uh, you know, your front cover, your fuel pump, that's all one piece. So you don't have a lot of wiggle room and as much wiggle room as I made now, I modified the body itself, opened up all the contours of the body also with the Dremel to allow for more room to get that down in there easily. And I still could not get it in. I mean, I literally didn't think I was gonna get it in there last night, but I did, like I say, after breaking the chassis, in half again. And I'm sorry if I'm moving around. I hope my, I'm shooting this with my iPhone, not with the, with the GoPro. So hopefully the phone will get rid of some of my wiggle. Sorry about that. But anyway, let me show you what's going on. So I've got both of them here. I've, I've, I've got them both sitting up uh, on their tires and rims. Um, these are not the tires and rims that come with this. I got these out of the parts box, got rid of the awful ones that come with it. And they are awful. They just, just, they're not, right the spokes are wrong and too thick and everything but anyway that's the little one is sitting up on all fours anyway i got the tires on no big deal with the back tires that goes on easy i've got the motor prepped for this now if you look here you can see that mounting block in that chassis this is what i'm talking about here even and they're all the same no matter what size of these you get so there's a slot cut in the bottom of the engine that goes in here that goes down on there but your this is where your issues come in with your tight tolerances around where the headers and the front of the engine and everything go there's just not any room you actually need to remove this there's a cross member supposed to be here that you need to take out and I don't know if you can see this because it's black, but I'm going to point at it through this. With this, there should be a cross member here, which makes it physically impossible to get the motor in. So you need to take that out. I snipped that out of there. So the motor would go in. So anyway, back to the big one. As you can see, it's sitting up on all fours. The issue I ran into with this big one. Am I doing this right? Yeah, I'm doing this right. The issue I ran into with the big one, number one, uh, I ordered aftermarket tires and rims from Shapeways for this also. It was the only thing that was available 
to get rid of the awful ones that came with it. So could not, the axles were too large a diameter fit in here. Tried to grind them down. I knew I couldn't drill out the center hole in here because you can see how tiny this is. I, so I thought about grinding them down. This is all very flimsy. It, it, let's see, the whole axle will actually flex. And I'm not gonna do this too much because it, I actually ended up, my idea was I, I cut off the most of the axle pin. Uh, I was gonna go in here with brass rod and drill this out. And as soon as I started drilling it, it absolutely started to disintegrate again, which is typical with the 3D printed stuff. And I knew I was gonna end up wrecking the spindles. So I stopped and what I really hated to do, but I ended up doing is I just glue, I sanded that, sanded the backs of the rims, and I glued the back side of the rim just straight onto the spindle. I, I really didn't have a choice, and I hated to do that uh, because that's just a rig job to me. And a good friend of mine had just sent me some of this glue, this B7000 glue, and told me how nice it was and flexible, and you know, you could really glue stuff tough to glue stuff with it. So that I tried it on this and it worked. And, and as you can see, it's given it some flexibility, but there's a ton of flexibility in this front axle anyway, which is, it's just, it's bad. And it, this took me two days to glue these two tires on and let them sit all day to make sure they were rigid. I had a, the, the body supported off the ground so there was no weight on them. I lined them up perfectly. I had stuff holding them in place from the outside. They're not perfect. They're probably both a little bit tipped because I'm eyeballing it. Um, I didn't have them in my jig but <clears throat> it's in there. Um, so that it, the front end's on, front tires are on. Finally got the motor in this nightmare. And, sorry, I totally dropped the phone. Um, there's the bottom of the chassis and I, you know, there's multiple points in there where I have glued this back together. And honestly, at this point, I don't even care what the bottom of it looks like. You know, I don't give a shit. Somebody wants to look under there and pick it apart, go right ahead. So that, that's it, the motor is in. And again, you can see how tight these tolerances are. Your fuel pump and everything is sticking out. I had wanted to run the fuel lines off the blower hat and down there, but you can't see most of it. And honestly, with the way this plastic was disintegrating, I just decided to call it and not doing it. What I did do, and I just did, was there, it does have a distributor, which, or Magneto, which I just managed to drill out without completely destroying that, and my plug lines are gonna run straight through that. What I did is just drilled straight through, I'm gonna run the four lines through that, and then I'm gonna go ahead and drill out uh, the valve covers here, you know, where I can put those down in there. So um, these are also gonna get chromed. I used the Molotow on this. All the pictures that we've gone through trying to reference this crazy thing, there's no picture where this car looks the same. I mean, it, I really, uh, I, I know Chuck has been talking to George, the Bushmaster, Schreiber, and uh, I think these guys were just piecemealing everything they could, beg, borrow, and steal, and to keep this car going all the time because every picture, the motor looks different, the headers are a different color, the butterflies and the the injector hat are a different color, The, the there was a tall like almost fuel injection plate on it at one time a really tall one then the blower hat was flat down on the blower there was a chrome blower there was a not chrome blower so i went with one of the pictures where it had a not not chrome blower but it had a chrome you know blower hat the valve covers were chrome so i i went with that version and i went with black headers because i don't like white headers uh but i think it from everything i could tell in the pictures black white and or silver um rear rims were magnesium later pictures they were gold um so yeah this, this thing is still you know <laughs> it's just it's just a multitude of sins but it is cool looking i'm going to be glad to get it done get it in my collection um i'm down to this and um my driver figure i still have to fix the parachute issue because this is not right where the chute goes. So I'm, I do have a scale chute that should fit in here that I'm gonna have to do some grinding on. Of course, it's 3D printed, 3D printed also. So I'm hoping it doesn't explode when I start grinding on it and I'll probably put the push bar in there, drill that out and I'll make a push bar out of metal. So anyway, these are the yellow fangs. Um, this is where we're at so far. So anyway, and the, and the little one I will, get done eventually. I'm so aggravated with this thing. I just want to 
kind of get it done and, and move along to some other projects. And I'll come back to the little one or work on it in between everything else. So I've got some driver's figures to finish up. They're all in silver. The fire suits, the helmet is supposedly supposed to be the same color as the body on this. Um, I've been in contact with a fellow uh, who gave me some information. I guess he's been talking to George also, and he had asked him about the helmet color, um, which I supposedly matched the body and had been lettered by Von Dutch that said Bushmaster on it. So I have not been able to find any pictures of that, so I don't know how to letter it up. So I'm going to paint it the, the same color yellow, and then I'm just going to wing it. I'll probably hand letter it, um, you know, put Bushmaster on there by hand and see see what I can come up with. So, so anyway, so that's, uh, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So um, that's, that's where I'm at so far. I'll be glad when this is done. Uh, I'm not, I, don't get me wrong. I'm really just, I'm not trying to just down this kit. I mean, I'm glad we've got it because, you know, this is a kit that everybody's always wanted and we, and we haven't had the opportunity to build, but you know, uh, to me, I, and I have to say, and I've been talking with some of my friends have been working with the 3d print stuff too. And, styrene is still king you know and uh i mean I, I love the resin stuff too um but i i think i don't know i, I don't know i think just i it's still injection molding to me is just still uh i mean i know that the 3d printing thing is going to open up so many doors for us and it seems good with the figures i mean most of the figures i've done 3d print haven't had too much issues and uh, maybe it's the guys i'm dealing with because everything seems to fit together pretty I, I mean i really haven't had to modify them or pin them too much or anything everything just kind of seems to go together glues together well paints up well so maybe it's just a car thing uh, i did build the chicken coop dragster from these same guys last year really didn't have any issues that thing went together great and i love it i mean it, it just so cool looking um but this thing has just been a headache and and um i'll be glad to finish it but uh anyway hang in there maybe in the next video it'll be done uh, i do have some other stuff in the works we've had some bad weather here this week so i really haven't been able to get out there and paint i got some more primer on a few things tonight and um i've got half a dozen things in the works i've got a bunch of chassis and bodies out there that are ready for paint work and um I just don't know what the weather's going to do here in the next week or so. It's it's chilly out here again. We're, I know not most of you guys that are up north, uh, chilly is not in the 40s. But for us, it's chilly here in Florida. So anyway, and it's keeping me from painting properly. So anyway, I have another update soon, and uh, I will see you again. So thanks for tuning in. You guys have a good one. Keep building. Talk to you soon.